Hello and welcome to the last video of Unit 1. You made it! Actually, you've been kind of lucky because if you add up all the time of the videos, you've watched about one hour of me talking. And normally in the first week of class, I talk for about an hour and a half over two different class periods. You've gotten off easy. Anyway, let's finish up. Uh, today we're going to talk about metrics and measurements, and this will be applicable to the lab we're going to do. So I want to start by distinguishing accuracy and precision. These are both related to making experimental measurements in the lab. So accuracy is how close a measurement is to the true value. And the way I think about this is when you step on the bathroom scale. When you step on the bathroom scale, you see a certain number. And I don't know about you, but whenever I go to my doctor's office and I step on her scale, it's always five pounds heavier. So either my scale is not accurate or her scale is not accurate. I tend to like to think hers is not accurate. So that's what accuracy is. It's how close is it to the actual value. Precision is how repeatable is a measurement that's being made. So even though my scale might not be accurate, it is giving me a similar value day after day after day. Now, if I got on my scale every day and I was off by seven or eight pounds, plus or minus every day, then my scale's not precise because the measurements aren't similar enough day after day. One way to picture accuracy and precision is to think about dartboards. So here we have four dartboards. In the upper left, we have uh, an example of what would be four darts, that's the dots, uh, that are both accurate and precise. So the bullseye is where the true measurement is supposed to be, the true value. And here we have those darts hitting the bullseye, so they're accurate, and they're all pretty much hitting the bullseye, so they're precise. Now over here, we don't have a very accurate set of darts. They're not near the bullseye, but they're still precise because they are repeatable. The measurements are repeatable. So this would be similar to my bathroom scale if my bathroom scale is not accurate, but it's giving me the same or similar values day after day. Down here in the lower left, these values, even though they're not on the bullseye, they fall around the bullseye and kind of average to the bullseye. So they are accurate, but they're not very precise. You can see that there's a lot of error between them. And then finally over here on the lower right, we have no accuracy and no precision. The average of these four darts is not near the bullseye and they are not clustered together. As you might imagine in science, we want both accuracy and precision in our measurements and in our instruments. So here are two rulers that are both showing centimeter scales and both of these are accurate. They're both showing the same amount of distance that would be covered in a centimeter scale. However, one of them is more precise than the other. And I bet you can probably figure out which that is. It's the one on the bottom. Because the one on the bottom has the centimeters further divided into millimeters. Every centimeter is divided into 10 millimeters. There are 10 millimeters in a centimeter. Up here, if we measured something that measured just about halfway between, maybe the seven and eight, we'd have to do some estimating. Whereas down on this bottom ruler, we could be a lot more precise. Okay, so we looked at some centimeters and millimeters there, so let's jump into the metric system. Now in the metric system, we have some base units for length, volume, mass, etc. And the ones we're gonna use in this course are shown at the top, and this is from your lab manual, by the way. It's a different version than you have, so it might not be table 24.1, but don't worry about that. It still looks the same. So for length in the metric system, we use the meter. Volume, we use the liter. Mass, we use grams. We're also gonna use in this class time, which is in seconds, which I believe you're familiar with. These base units in the metric system are then joined with a prefix that tells you if it's larger than the base unit or smaller than the base unit. And that is what's shown here. So here are the base units. This is just showing those main three that I showed you. And then we can be bigger than the base unit if you're going up on this scale or smaller than the base unit if you're going down. Again, this is in your lab manual. For example, a kilometer. So here's meter, and then there's deca, hecto, kilo. 
kilometer, kilo, kilometer. And it says a kilometer, a kilo, anything, a kilogram, a kilo liter is a thousand times the base, which is down here. So a kilometer is 1000 times whatever the base is. And in this case, I've chosen a meter. So one kilometer is a thousand meters. If we go in the other direction down here to centi, for example, a centi is one one hundredth of whatever the base unit is. So centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter, which is 0 0.01 meters. That's one way to figure out which prefix to use when you're using smaller or larger units than the base unit. Another way that you might find easier is to use this visual chart. And this is also in your lab. Now what's shown here is a staircase. And what you do is you look for the prefix or the base unit, which is in the middle, and you have to decide are you going to go up the staircase or down the staircase to convert from one to another unit? And then you just move the decimal. For example, let's take that first example of a kilometer. So a kilometer is here, kilo, and meter is here. So if we want to go from one kilometer down to meter, I'll put in the one on top of this. You can think of these like stairs. And we have to go down one, two, three stairs to get to meters. This arrow points down and it indicates that when you go down the steps or down the ladder, you move the decimal point to the right, one place for each step. So a kilometer is 10 hectometers, which is 100 decameters, which is 1,000 meters. So that's a visual way of making these changes, which I think works a little bit better. Let's try the centimeter example. So now the centimeter is down here and we wanna go up the staircase to the meter. And so when we go up, we have to look at this arrow that says going up, you move the decimal to the left. So we have one centimeter. Now we move the decimal to the left. So that brings us to 0.1 decimeters, 0 0.01 meters. Let's look at some other examples. 34 kilometers would equal how many meters? Go ahead and put it on pause and see what you get. All right, so 34 kilometers, we wanna go down to meters, so we have to add zeros. We're moving the decimal to the right. 34,000 meters. What about this one? Now, I've changed my base unit from meter to gram, but that doesn't really matter. So how many grams? are 3,500 milligrams. So we're gonna start down here at milligrams and we're gonna move the decimal to the left. 3.5 grams. Here's one more to try. 0.5 liters is how many hectoliters? So if you're not familiar with what these different units are, just look at the stairs, they're listed here, hecto and liter is down here. And you can also look on this chart. So we have 0.5, we put it where the liters are because that's where it is. We go up the staircase and there's your answer, 0 0.005 hectoliters. Okay, finally, a little bit about conversions between the metric system and other units. For example, the earth has a diameter of 12,742 kilometers. How many miles is that? Well, you need a conversion factor. How many miles is a kilometer? Or how many kilometers is a mile? And these are not things I expect you to memorize. I would always give you this information in a table or in a problem. So I could tell you that one kilometer is 0 0.62 miles. Alternatively, I could tell you that one mile is 1.61 kilometers. They both work. I'm gonna show you how to solve it both ways. Here is solving it with that first equation. Here's the number we have, 12,742 kilometers. I'm gonna multiply it by the fraction of 0.62 miles divided by one kilometer because that equals one. And we can multiply anything times one and we don't change it. Now notice that I put the miles on the top of this fraction and the kilometers on the bottom so that my kilometers would cancel out. Kilometers divided by kilometers cancels out and the miles stays on top and carries over to my answer. 
and I get this number times 0.62 giving me 7773 miles. What if I had chosen this second conversion, one mile equals 1.6 kilometers? Well, I still need my miles on top and kilometers on bottom in this particular place. And that's shown here. The reason is I still need my kilometers to drop out. So in this case, I take this number and I divide by 1.61, and I still get a number that makes sense. Now it's not the same number as when I did it previously, and that's because these are not very accurate. I didn't talk about the accuracy of numbers, but these numbers are rounded, they're approximate, and so this number isn't exactly the same as the previous number. But what I wanna know is that you know how to do these problems. I'm not worried about the details of the math in terms of which one of these you chose. I wanna know you know how to do the problem. Okay, one last example. And this is true, I just checked this today. Gasoline in Italy costs about $1.67 per liter in US dollars. How much is this in US dollars per gallon? Go ahead and pause and see if you can figure it out. Oh, and I'll give you the equivalency. I'll just give you one equivalency this time so you don't have to make a choice. You're gonna take what you know, $1.67 US dollars per liter, and you're gonna multiply it by something that removes liters and gets gallons in there instead. And that's going to be this. One liter is equivalent to 0.264 gallons. Your liters are gonna cancel out, right? One's on the numerator, one's on the denominator, and you're gonna end up with an answer with dollars per gallons. And it turns out to be $6.33 a gallon for gas in Italy right now. Coming up next week, Unit 2, Geologic Time and Our Position on Earth.